Hey everyone, welcome back to the treasure hall, where the treasure is making something nice with your hands. And the hall is all that spare time you have left now that you don't play Dota 2 anymore. Today I'm going to show you how I went from... Today I'm going to show you how I went from this to this. I made this axe out of the materials I used when I started off, so like the cheapest stuff I could find. And it came out way better than expected. The paint job came out really well. Uh, I, I tried some new techniques for this one and it paid off. Yeah, uh, let's get into it. I always start off with a design in Illustrator. I can just kind of plan out my weapon. So here's the core and here's uh, some rectangles I drew for um, the decoration up top of the handle and the pommel at the bottom, of course. And then I draw out the, the head of the axe. Um, can I just make in curved shapes and circles and then combine them together in this shape. Then I select everything and I... Oops, okay, let's just pretend that never happened. So I select everything <laughs> and then I put them in an A4 uh, uh, sized um, art artboard and then I could just print it out from here and uh, that's it. I bought a few um, golf clubs. Here's an intact one with the head and the handle still on it. I cut those off with a saw, uh, the tip with a saw and then the bottom with like a knife. Take off the double sided tape as well. Make sure to round off the, uh, the edges of the tip and at the bottom with uh, some sandpaper and uh, that's good to go now. With the axe head printed out I can now mark it down on my uh, core to make sure that I put everything where it's supposed to be. So I take a, this chalk pen, this chalk marker pen, it's really useful for this kind of stuff. Uh, to mark it down. I've done the other side as well for the uh, pommel and now I'm just kind of measuring out how big I want the handle to have. I think it's like I usually do it roughly 50 to 20 centimeters. I think yeah 20 centimeters for this one probably. Yeah see that's about 20 centimeters. Um, for sword handles I do smaller uh, but for these like axes I like to do a little bit bigger. I'm also marking down the area where I want to have the ring or like the decoration at the end of the handle. Um, yeah, that's about right. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, maybe I should mark it at the, bottom, at the top as well? No, yeah, just in case. If I want to have some decoration, I mark it down. Uh, but we'll see how that goes. So with like a exacto knifey thing, I cut out roughly the shape of the axe, just to get all the excess paper out of the way. Then I put it on some cardstock or cardboard, because it's a more of a sturdier material to use um, for tracing. Then I stick the prints to the cardboard with some scotch tape in this case or any other tape you have at your disposal. Then I make sure to put a new knife uh, in my uh, little pen knifey, exacto knifey thing because you don't want blunt knives for this. Uh, then what I do is I put my old and blunt knives in a uh, knife bucket, just, just like a special container just for blunt knives and that way you can dispose of them easily. And then you carefully cut out the prints um, it's not an exact science, you know, it won't come down to like uh, a millimeter or two, so don't worry about it too much. Uh, there's a lot of you can fix uh, with some uh, extra cutting and sanding, uh, so don't worry about it if it's not perfect. But do try your best, of course. <laughs> Clean up uh, the edges if necessary, and of course make sure to block the camera with your giant head. And I'm going to keep this part uh, for now because I'm going to need it for the middle for later. So we're starting with our puzzle mat here. Uh, I need it for the axe heads. Uh, here I'm trying to see how many I can get out of one mat. Unfortunately, the number is uh, two. Oh well. So I bought these pins a while ago and I thought they would be useful for uh, pinning down patterns and shapes and stuff on my phone. Uh, in hindsight, it probably wasn't really that necessary, but better to be safe than sorry, right? So once that's done, I trace it with my white marker that I bought especially to be used on this uh, grey mat because this works really well. Then I repeat the process, but, and this is very important, I flip my pattern. That way I make sure that the smooth side of the foam is on the outside of my axe head when I uh, glue everything together. Because if I cut them all the same way, I will have uh, the grip texture on one side and that is something I don't want, obviously. And here I used some scrap foam from a previous project to do the third part. Bring forth the box of knives. For this I'm going to use one of the thinner and more flexible utility knives. I'm also going to take out some spare blades and a sharpener just in case. 
To make sure we get some nice uh, smooth cuts, I replace the blade with a new one and of course dispose of the old one the proper way and I put a new blade in. There we go. When I cut foam, I uh, try to cut as perpendicular as possible. I am not really great at it, but I do keep the blade at an angle um, and use the length of the blade to help me out because that makes cutting so much easier than trying to hold the blade up straight. The flexibility of these uh, thinner knives um, help a lot uh, with these like curved uh, cuts. I do sometimes, especially in this case, I'm going to go over it twice, do like a pre-cut and then uh, like cut all the way through and that way I make sure that I don't mess it up or I don't get jagged cuts because those are the worst. And there we go, that's all cut. Now we just need to repeat that process uh, two more times. So there you go, that's the rough shape of the axe head. But we need to take care of that uh, grip texture on the inside because we need smooth surfaces to glue together. You can sand them off with some sandpaper if you want, but um, I prefer to cut them off with a utility knife. For this you need a razor sharp blade and even though I just put a new one in, it just doesn't feel sharp enough. So I'm gonna use my sharpener here to buff it up a little bit. There we go, that's much better. So you want to just kind of keep your knife flat on the foam and carefully cut off these things, these uh, nibs or knobs, thingies, I don't know what you call them in English, they're annoying, you just, just get rid of them. Just brush off some of the little bits of foam and oh, don't do that, that's very dangerous Matein. Anyway, uh, once you're done with that, you can repeat the process two more times. Of course I didn't record that because that would be boring to watch, so just let's just go to the next step which is sanding. This will make sure that the glue sticks better and also will take care of those little bits of foam that were left behind after cutting all those nibs, knobs, thingies. It doesn't have to be super thorough, just kind of roughen up the surface a little bit more. That's, uh, that will be enough. So for the next part, I need the, um, the center of this uh, printout here. So I'm gonna just cut that out quickly. Now I need some uh, strong fabric. Uh, ideally I would use an old pair of jeans for this, but I don't have one, so I have this polo shirt, which is from a really thick material. That will do for now, but ideally use some old jeans. Then I trace my cutout on this piece of cloth, without pins, wow, living dangerously today, Martijn. And then, instead of using scissors like a normal person, I miserably fail at cutting this out with a utility knife. And not just once, but twice, because I need two of these bits. Anyway, I'm gonna save you from 20 minutes of agony and just skip to the end. So what are these for, you might wonder? Well, they're gonna help reinforce the axe head, because the axe head doesn't have a core, because only the handle has a core. And in order to fortify it a little bit, we're gonna glue in these two pieces of uh, cloth. Apparently this helps with the sturdiness. Oh, that's the wrong way. There we go, just like that. I forgot to mark the um, the place where the core goes in the printout, so I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it and hope for the best. Because for this middle part of the axe head, I need to make a gap for the core, so I need to cut that out. Just gonna shove in my blade here, give me one second. I try to cut as perpendicular as possible, especially for this part, it's very important. And now the core fits perfectly snug in the middle, just like that. Okay, time to whip out the baking parchment because we're gonna use contact glue and I don't want to dirty my brand new cutting mat, so here we go. This might be a good time to tell you that I'm wearing old clothes because the stuff we're working with, like the latex and the glue, will not wash out at all, so wear some old stuff. Baking parchment is great because it doesn't stick to anything, so I don't even know what I'm trying to do here, anyway. My phone stopped recording here, and that's not the last time that will happen in this video. Anyway, I was applying uh, contact glue with the brush to this part of the core and to the inside of these two uh, pieces of foam, because you need to apply contact glue to both surfaces that you want to stick together. Then we put the lid back on our glue, we put away our brush, and we wait 5 to 10 minutes. Just gonna have to wait for a few minutes. It's just, yep, yeah, that's glued, yep, yeah, that's also glued, yep. Yeah. Just gonna have to wait five to ten minutes. 
Has it been five minutes yet? Uh, that's probably f that's probably enough. Now remember, contact glue um, sticks immediately, so you have one shot to to put everything. Shit! Oh, oh, one second. So yeah, you have one shot to put your pieces together, so be careful. Also make sure to put some pressure on your parts, like press them together really firmly. Now we apply a nice even layer of glue on here and on this piece of cloth, which is about as easy as cutting it with a utility knife. Then we wait for it to dry, and that's where my phone stops recording again. Anyway, we stick the cloth to the foam, then we apply some glue on the foam and on the second piece of foam. More foam, more glue, yada yada yada, you know the rest. Just make sure to wait 5 to 10 minutes every time you glue something. You can even whip out some kitchen utensils to apply even pressure. And that's that, all glued together. Looks very rough, but we're gonna work on that right now. Welcome to crotch cam. So with this rotary tool here, we're gonna even those edges out to be more smooth and straight. My phone's focus is going all over the place, but I've put in this very smooth um, grinding stone bit and I'm just carefully carving away and taking my time. Don't move against the rotation of the tool and just move with it. Otherwise you're gonna dig into the foam, you don't want that. By the way, nice composition here, Matijn. Just me grinding this foam axe on my crotch. Just, I hope you're all enjoying this video. <laughs> I'm also gonna apply a slight bevel to all the edges. This will remove some of the um, kind of foam residue that's left here and there after sanding everything and it also just looks nice at least that's what i think before we give the axe blades an edge we're gonna have to kind of mark it down kind of like a guiding line as to where we want the um, edge to go luckily i saved the uh, the cutout from the printout the cutout from the printout anyway this will be my uh, guideline to how far i should grind or sand in this case Welcome to hallway cam. This part was a little hard to film, but I've got my air protection and my respirator and we're gonna use this uh, belt sander to bevel the axe blade. Just like with the rotary tool, I take my time. I do not press too hard and I work with the rotation of the tool, although this one is a bit more forgiving than the, uh, the rotary tool is. It does take some getting used to. My first weapon was a disaster on this thing. My second weapon was also a disaster on this thing, but after, you know, after a few weapons you get good at it, you get a feeling as to how far you can press and oh fuck, I already messed it up, I went over the edge. Well done, Martijn. Now all bets are off and it's just a matter of going back and forth, back and forth, trying to even out both sides. I kind of, I, I, I managed it quite well in the end, so it's okay. It, it, I was quite happy with the end result here, as you can see. Nice and even, nice and symmetrical. Okay, next up is the shaft. I have a scrap piece of uh, yoga mat here. I'm gonna measure out how much I need for the uh, shaft on the weapon. And then I'm gonna mark it down and cut it. And then I just kind of wrap it around the core to see how much I need. Since this core is tapered, what I do is just kind of mark both ends and then cut in between those marks. This usually gets me a pretty good result, but since we're gonna do two wraps anyway, uh, if I mess up this first layer, it's not too bad. I just need to make sure that I don't mess up the second one. Then I carefully stick it to the core, trying to keep it as straight as possible. Uh, that makes wrapping a lot easier. Uh, then I also kind of wrap it around carefully. The nice thing about foam is that it's very forgiving. So even if you don't make a perfect cut, you can kind of stretch it or squeeze it uh, into shape. Here I make sure that the bottom parts are aligned. Um, so we can squeeze them together later. But to do that, we need some more contact glue, of course. And here I would actually wait for those five to 10 minutes for the glue to dry, otherwise um, it's not gonna stick as well and you're gonna get a nasty seam and you don't want those. So this part is a bit tricky. So what you wanna do here is try your best to align the two um, edges of the foam as well as you can. You don't have to like go all the way up and down. What I do is just kind of like, skip every few centimeters and squeeze and then go back over it uh, once I'm done and then that way um, it's easier to align them I find. The first layer is always the hardest one, the second layer is way easier. I have another scrap piece of foam here, unfortunately my cat damaged it so I can't use that part but, but maybe we can use the rest? Uh, the answer is no, it's too small for that um, so I need to break in a new yoga mat. 
making the measurements, making the cuts. Um, there we go, all ready to be glued. Oh, that's not gonna be enough. Time to get out the new glue. Courtesy of cosplayshop.be. I don't mind plugging them, they're, they're a good web shop. So I bought a liter of contact glue in a can. And they also sell these squirt bottles for a few euros and I love it. It's so easy, look at this. Kapow, that's all the glue, we just have to spread it out a bit and we're done. I'm also going to put glue on the edges beforehand this time, so I don't have to wait another 5 to 10 excruciating minutes. Now it's just a matter of aligning everything, wrapping it around, squeezing the edges together, and there you go. I put extra care into aligning the edges this time, but I didn't have the patience to wait those 5 minutes, and so the glue didn't fully dry, and I had to do some repairs afterwards. I also glued a shaft to the axe head, just for good measure. So here I was thinking, oh it's coming along nicely and then I turned it around and saw this enormous logo on the back. Uh, this is kind of like pressed in and so that will show up after painting. But then I thought I know how to fix this so I blasted it with my hot air gun and then all the glue came loose. So that was great. But hey, at least the logo is gone now. So next I want to make this decorative ring at the top of the handle. So I took my digital calipers and measured the girth of my shaft and then I came out of the bathroom and I actually made some measurements for this ring. Then I searched my collection of caps to look for a diameter I like. We're gonna use this cap to cut out some holes in this scrap foam I have here. It requires a little bit of practice but it's not too hard. Um, you press firmly to make kind of a circle shape in the foam and then you kind of twist and twist and twist and twist until you go all the way through the foam. Uh, it's not as much about pressure as it is about friction by twisting, like let the, the cap do the work for you. I want a ring like this at the bottom of my handle as well, so I'm cutting out the second one. Then I cut away the grip texture, I sand them, and I use my rotary tool to smooth them out a bit more, make them more uniform. You can also use a hot air gun to get rid of any roughness and don't, just don't overdo it because mine is smoking at the moment. I, I lost the cutout that I used for my uh, pommels so I need to make a new one and I swear this video is not sponsored uh, but this is the only piece of cardstock that I could find that would fit this the best. Uh, but you know, if you want to sponsor me just send me over some more of that low density foam. <laughs> I have this pommel design that I've used for a few weapons, I'm going to use it for this axe as well. It's really easy to make. First I draw a circle, then I cut half the circle, then I cut downwards like this to get this shape. And then I use this nifty compass cutter thing to cut curves on both sides. It's a bit too tall so I'm going to trim it down one centimeter. But yeah, that's a, that's a nice shape. Now I just need to trace them three times cut them three times, uh, remove the grip texture three times, but then I realized that my core is 1.5 centimeters wide at the bottom, whilst my foam is only one centimeter wide. So I cut an extra pommel part out of uh, a yoga mat, which is six millimeters thick, and that fixed it. Editing this video made me realize I do a lot of things out of order, so here's me cutting a hole in the circle we made earlier, but this was like 10 minutes ago. I wanted to have a cleaner cut on the other circle, so this time I'm using a pen cap. Now I'm just putting some glue on and I'm trying to stick it to the shaft, but some already dried up glue got in the way and now it's not not on properly, but yeah, I will manage. Anyway, back to the pommel. Here I'm just applying glue to all the parts and my phone is really struggling. It's dropping a lot of frames. I think it's because I've been recording for hours. While we wait for that to dry, I fill up the top and the bottom of my core with some um, hot glue to reinforce them. Unfortunately, I did not frame this properly, so you can't see it, but you'll just have to believe me. There's hot glue on both sides now. So I removed all the video files from my phone and let it have a rest. But then I forgot to press record when I started working again, so here's the pommel all finished. But yeah, it's just the, the parts sandwiched together with the core in the middle. That's it. And then I forgot to press record again, so here's me um, cleaning up the pommel with the rotary tool. I'm also adding a slight bevel to this part as well, just like with the axe head. And you might think that all those sandwiched layers of foam might show up in the paintwork later, but it's, it really doesn't. Here's some more hot air action, just to seal it up and to get rid of any rough bits. Here I'm applying some glue on the ring to stick to the pommel. I'll do that later off camera. 
You might think to yourself, Martijn, this axe makes no sense, because the axe head and the shaft are the same width. Like, how would this work in real life? And it doesn't. It doesn't work at all. Um, but instead of fixing this, I'm gonna just hide it with an extra strip of foam. I'm measuring out how wide I want it to be. Then I'm cutting a strip of yoga mat, making the ends a bit prettier. I had an idea to use my rotary tool to add some extra decoration, which worked out really nice. I've marked out the middle by folding it in half, applying said glue, and carefully sticking it to the axe, starting from the top, from the middle of the, um, the strip. I applied some extra glue to some parts that didn't stick quite well, and there you go. My design flaw is successfully hidden. I wanted to decorate that brace with some rivets, so I'm gonna cut out some small circles out of this 2mm craft foam. I tried using this copper tube, but it didn't really work out, so I switched to this pen cap, which worked way better. Once I had enough of them, I used a ruler to space them out evenly over the uh, brace. I marked down where to apply the glue. I applied the glue. I stuck them on very carefully, because they're really sticky, and they get stuck to your fingers really easily. And there we go. It might not look like much right now, but once we're done painting, you'll see. It will look really cool, I promise. Since these rings are quite essential to the structural integrity of this weapon, I'm just going to use some hot glue here to reinforce them. And then it's time for one of the most tedious parts of the construction process, which is making the handle. Uh, the way I do this is I uh, use twine or string or whatever cheap stuff I can find, and I wrap it around the core several times. I always start off with taping a piece uh, to the core and then just wrapping over it, and that way you make sure it doesn't shift. I also put a drop of hot glue every few centimeters just to make sure everything stays in place. You can use other types of glue as well, but hot glue is easy to use and sets really quickly, so it's pretty ideal for this. But do be careful, because this is definitely the part where I hurt myself the most, because it's really easy to accidentally stick your fingers in the hot glue here. This part takes forever, so just put on some good music or a nice podcast and just be ready to twist twine in your hands for 20 minutes. Shout out to the Sawbones podcast for keeping me sane during this process. Once I reach the end, I just place a glob of hot glue and I wrap my way all the way back to the beginning. Just gonna fast forward through this. Uh, I think we both have better things to do. Once you get to a thickness you like, you cut the string and you glue the end in place and that's it. But I do like to clean up the um, all the bits of fiber that stick out because otherwise they'll get stuck in the paintwork and I don't want that obviously. This is a bit risky, but I wanted to bevel the brace, and the risk is that I could hit the foam while doing this and leave marks and dents, and I don't want that, but it, it worked out really well. I didn't damage anything, so... I want to etch my signature, I guess, <laughs> in, uh, in the pommel, so I'm just going to use this white marker to uh, mark where to burn with my wood burner. Speaking of which, here's my wood burner. It, uh, it takes a while to heat up, but it works really well on foam, as you can see. We're going to use this to mimic some battle damage on this axe. I don't always do this, but it does give the weapon a bit more character, you know? It's adding some scratches and some dents here and there. I feel like I'm not really good at this yet, but I'm improving slowly. Less is more when it comes to adding battle damage. I also try to avoid uniformity as much as possible. And it really helps to think about how this weapon would be used, you know, where would the wear and tear show? Now it's time to add my signature to the pommel. It's basically my initials in Anglo-Saxon script, which is, I know, it's not very creative, but, you know, sometimes it's, it's, it's nice to work with cliches. And here I am adding uh, wood grain to the shaft. I know this is not logical at all, this would not, you know, when you make a, a wooden a staff or wooden handle obviously it's not gonna look like tree bark but I do feel like it adds character again and so I do it anyway. You might argue about realism on this weapon but come on, it's made out of yoga mats come on. So there you go that's our axe it's all done and ready to be painted in the next video and uh, oh wait I forgot something let's fix that first. LARP axes have a weak point, which is the bottom of the blade. Sometimes a weapon gets snagged into there and the, the foam can tear. So in order to prevent that, we're gonna stick a piece of cloth there. Here's our trusty polo shirt, and we're gonna this time use scissors, like a normal human being, 
and cut out a tiny strip that we're going to stick underneath the, um, the axe blade. It's a bit too long, so we're going to trim it. It's also a little bit too wide, so we're going to trim it some more. Apply the glue, wait 5 to 10 minutes, and stick it on there. And now we're actually, actually done, I promise, for reals. <laughs> actually, get it? <laughs> kill me. So that's the construction done. Uh, in the next video I'm gonna show you how I painted it, how I did some detail work, dry brushing, um, weathering, that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, so um, you know, uh, uh, yeah, uh, see you next time.